Pete Wilson was, I think, um, the governor that originated the, um, this anti-immigrant wave in the country. And you know, like they say sometimes, what happens in California spreads across the country. So there's California. I'm from California, so I can tell you we're trendsetters in California, not always for positive things, sometimes for things that, that could be negative. And in this case, uh, he ran a campaign, a very nasty campaign, um, uh, that, were, that was targeting um, immigrants and had these signs with a border and, and, and people running across the border and, and saying, is this what you want? You want this invasion? So when I interviewed him, I pressed him on that. And, you know, he was a grandson of, of immigrants himself. And he did not appreciate me asking him what his grand, immigrant grandparents would say when they saw the type of advertising that he did um, to promote himself. And, and he did get a little bit upset and he did get up and take the microphone off and say, I have to go now. And I continued to press him on, on that same issue up until the moment he said that he had to go to take a flight. And, you know, that, I think that was sort of like the beginning, you know, with 187. Uh, 187 was a proposition that limited um, any kind of government uh, services for undocumented immigrants at the time. And I think that was sort of like the, the first anti-immigrant law uh, that really impacted. And, you know, up to now, so many years have gone by, and I think you still have people talking about that. Those issues still come up in, 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 in debates, in political debates, in gubernatorial debates. So. You know, that's sort of like our issue. That's something that we need to advocate for. And, and, that's, and we need to ask those types of questions to politicians such as Pete Wilson. To add a little bit to, to the Pete Wilson situation, I think one of the things that bothered Pete Wilson so much when we interviewed him was the fact that we had asked people on the street to, um, they really felt that he was against them. So we said, what would you do? What, what would you ask him if you had him in front of you? So we taped several questions from the Hispanic community uh, to Pete Wilson, and politicians weren't used to that. They weren't used to taking questions from people. You know, now in the era of social media where you get questions from Facebook and Twitter is different. Now they know that they have to be, have a more direct contact with, with people. But at the time, they weren't used to that. So I think he was very um, shocked by the fact that we put someone up and say, Mr. Pete Wilson, why do you hate us? Or Mr. Pete Wilson, what do you have against you know, our community. So that's one of the reasons I think that, that really upset him. And part of, of our coverage there, I think, is what, has, what began uh, to earn us his reputation of doing advocacy journalism. Um, and from then on, I think that we can, because that was the beginning of the really bad time, you know, the, uh, the image of the community goes in cycles, up and down, up and down. That was one of those down times mm -hmm. where the, um, not only undocumented immigrants, but immigrants were accused of all the ills of this country. And I think that's one of the reasons why we decided that we need to speak up for them. Not that we need to say, advocate for an open border policy, but we need to give them a voice. Mm. Um, we need to be those, um, uh, give them um, the information that they need so that they have, so we can empower them. I don't think it's a matter of speaking for them or advocating for them, but empowering them with the information that they, that they need and asking the questions that they need answered. If they can't ask the questions, then we need to ask those questions for them. So, you know, when we are accused of advocacy journalism, what I always say is that, you know, we're basically um, contributing to uh, a debate in this country. Otherwise, it's a monologue accusing immigrants for all the ills of, the, of this country. And, and some might argue that, no, it's not all immigrants. It's only undocumented immigrants. Well, there's a very fine line between undocumented immigrants and immigrants because just about the whole community feels um, somehow affected by this because of the very negative rhetoric uh, that surrounds the immigration issue and that has escalated throughout the last 20 years, more so, more so in the last 10 years. I think ever since 9-11, um, the uh, image of immigrants has been very negative and mainstream in, 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 in politics. So what we do is that we contribute to a debate. If you in mainstream media and on, talk, on radio talk shows and with politicians hear all the horrible things that immigrants are bringing to this country, according to them, well, I think it's our duty to show not only how immigrants are contributing to this country, but some of their human stories. Because, you know, they're human beings and everyone has a reason, everyone has a story of how they became undocumented in this country or why they came to this country undocumented or why they came and stayed. So those are the types of stories that I think is important for us to, to share. We need to explain 
um, to our audience and to a larger audience uh, that immigrants are here to contribute, that they're here in search of a better life for them, for their families, but they also want to be part of society. And I think that's why we give them a voice and that's why we advocate for them.